Welcome back to my channel. My name is Deanna Fay, and I do things just a little bit different here. I like to listen to or watch interviews with songwriters, and I do it so that I can see if I can find anything interesting, gain any insights about the songwriter's process. I'm a songwriter myself, a singer-songwriter from Canada, and yeah, let's get right into it. Today, we're going to be doing... Elliot Smith. So Elliot Smith is just a really cool guy and songwriter. And I feel like we're just going to go right into the interview. And I've never heard this interview before. So you're just going to get to see my reaction. I'm going to be pausing and you guys can follow along as I listen to this interview. And I'll just be pointing out anything of interest, maybe talk a little bit about some of the psychology or some of the songwriting process. Here we go. And the interview that I'm listening to today is called Elliot Smith Gives a Songwriting Lesson. And I'm not actually certain where it came from. It was just posted on YouTube, April 16th, 2006. And it's pretty popular. It's got over 500,000 views. I mean, should be more in my opinion, but let's listen to it. I kind of imagine things just during the day, and or I might, and I I play it pretty much every well every day. Just in, I don't have a, a very methodical approach. I think it's uh, imagination is the divine force, and if you just don't uh, block it up. It'll come out and surprise you. What I liked about this is that he he doesn't necessarily have a method. And we've seen this already with Paul McCartney. And we've seen it with a few other songwriters where they don't necessarily have a methodical approach to songwriting. And I'm going to keep pointing this out because personally, I think this is just a great songwriting method. You don't necessarily need to have one at all. And he just goes with his imagination. So he says, I like to imagine things throughout the day. And it kind of just makes me think of how I sort of uh, come up with music and song lyrics, especially, or just song ideas, is you're just sort of going about your day, doing other things. Um, let's say going for a long walk and sort of just daydreaming and letting your imagination be the muse, like Elliot Smith says, I think that it's a brilliant sort of approach because it's kind of a non-approach. You don't want to be trying to force something if it's not there. You kind of just want to let different ideas come to you and let your imagination be sort of the guide. So let's listen a bit more. I'm really into chord changes, you know? That was the thing that I liked when I was a kid. So I'm not like a, I don't make up a riff really, you know? It's usually sort of like, like, like a sequence like that or something. It has some, implied melody in it or something like that, you know? Uh, so he he says he doesn't really do riffs. It's he, he, he songwrites using chord changes. And I think this is a really cool approach to, to use because it kind of just, it's a bit more intuitive, it seems, the way he's, the way he's writing songs. And you can sort of find the melody within those chord changes. I think that's what he's trying to say. And I don't know if it's because I've listened to a lot of Elliot Smith uh, growing up, or if, you know, maybe my songwriting approach is sort of influenced by his, but that's something that I also like to do is I don't necessarily always have a riff. I like to just sort of, um, when I'm writing a song, I focus on the chord changes probably more than anything else. And I don't know if it's just because I didn't necessarily have 
classical or like the standard musical training. I just sort of taught myself to play uh, using books and stuff like that. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, with this approach. There's no one way to write music. If you prefer making riffs and you prefer a more methodical approach and it works for you, well, that's cool. But I'm just really interested in, I'm really interested in these songwriters that tend to just sort of come up with stuff sort of on the spot and, you know, find the melody and, you know, it's not so stuck in a certain way. I think that's just really awesome. And I think the result, the musical result that comes from it, is a lot more unique. You know, it's not... Uh, it's hard to explain why. <laughs> because it is so intuitive, right? Yeah. yeah, it'd be a drag to have to do battle with conventions all the time. You can kind of be imaginative with them. Sitting around kind of playing and not really paying a whole lot of attention. Because if you're always looking at your fingers and you see what you're playing and you think, okay, I could go to this or go to that, or, you know, instead of just being like... Although most of those are normal chords, but this is some kind of, sort of like a, some sort of D7 or something. So he, he, he's saying that like when he's writing, he doesn't necessarily always want to be looking at the fretboard, you know, and trying to like, I think why is because if you're looking and you, you start to think of it as sort of like this object or tool. And when you go into that sort of mode of thinking, it's not really imaginative. It's like you're, you could get a little bit stuck in trying to figure out what chord comes next, like, oh, I'm on C, so okay, I'm going to G now. Or, you know, those sort of like um, traditional chord progressions, chord changes. And what he, he brings up is how m maybe most of the chords that he ended up playing just now at, like, on a whim, maybe they were mostly normal, but then one of the chords was this sort of, uh, what did he say? It was just this one that he's made up, you know, it's not really made up, but he he kind of just experimented and listened. And I think this is something that songwriters can incorporate more often, is the idea of not necessarily always looking at what you're doing, just sort of listening and experimenting and sort of taking advantage of that that imaginative and sort of inventive way, almost, of playing. But it has an E in it. I don't know what it's really called. I like yeah. it. Yeah. He doesn't... He doesn't even know, like, what the chord is called, and that's totally cool. You know, when I was just uh, a bit younger and getting into the whole songwriting world again, I kind of felt like Oh my god, you have to be you have to be so smart with music or like you have to know everything and if you don't, well then people will think you're totally not cool and just not professional. That's not the case at all. Like you don't have to know everything. Even like very very professional, great, amazing, talented musicians and songwriters. They don't necessarily always know what chords or notes they're playing. It's normal. And I used to think that you had to know every single note and every single chord that you're playing at all times. Um, even though I didn't, I, I was far from that. So at one point I tried to like memorize things and I realized that was just silly. It, it's useful to a degree. It's good to sort of do that to sort of learn uh, where things are on the guitar. For example, if you know the general structure of the fretboard and where certain notes are, then it's a lot easier and faster to figure out where other ones are. So if you just know 
prep five, seven, nine, twelve, maybe three, and the open uh, notes, that's really, really helpful. But you don't have to know everything that you're doing at all times. And it might actually, there might be like a benefit to not knowing what you're doing to a certain degree, you know. Um, but yeah, just experiment with your instruments. Don't, don't get stuck on trying to be that sort of perfect musician. There's no such thing, first of all. But second of all, you might, there might be an advantage to just sort of playing around and not knowing what you're doing necessarily. It, you might end up coming up with some really cool chords or chord changes. So let's do it. The D7. One thing I notice myself doing a lot is playing versions of chords where the, the bass note is a fifth, like an F with a C bass or G with a C with a G in the bass. Not terribly exciting, but... So, he talks about how he, he does the C chord with a G bass. And I've brought this up just a little bit before, how adding that uh, bass note that's different, so the C, G chord, for example, I think why it sounds so good is because there's like a tiny, tiny bit of dissonance in there, almost, or it's like, it, it just sounds more fuller and darker. It doesn't... It doesn't sound as bright in some cases, not always, but it ends up giving a sort of richness to the music. And I think it just also adds a bit of the unexpected, you know, it's not just a typical C chord. It has some, you know, richness, it has layers, it has depths, you know, it's like Shrek. I don't know what else to say, but it's a cool, cool way to do things. That's all. If Elliot Smith says so, it must be. That's something I kind of like about that. demonstrating a song or, or his like songwriting sort of process and it looks to me like he's just sort of playing with the chord changes and playing with these little variations on the chords at the same time so uh, he's adding on the different um, the different notes the different bass notes for example he he's taking the same chord and you know sliding it up to another fret you can do that with the C, G chord pretty easily. Go up to the fifth fret, it sounds cool. Um, I've done that in my songwriting with my song Reassure. It's actually a C, G that slides up to the fifth fret. And, and then he's just sort of experimenting with the chord changes. And, you know, it's not necessarily a song yet, but it does, it sounds pretty cool. Um. It's really sort of, this string's not moving because my finger's on it. This one's not moving because my finger's on that too. So it's really just the notes that I'm playing with this hand. Everything else is blocked off. So it's really just three strings. So sometimes it's okay if you can't play the chord in full. You know, you know how sometimes you're trying to play like this complicated chord uh, and it just 
it's not working for you. I have like tiny, I don't know if you can't tell necessarily from this like angle, but I have tiny, tiny like hands. So, and even though I've been playing guitar for like, it's gonna be almost two decades, I know, I'm old. There's certain things that I just can't do and it's not because I can't play well, it's because those chord shapes just don't work with my hand and but I you can make it work by just playing for example the bass notes or like just three of the notes and you can still get the sound across and as long as you can still hear the general uh, note or chord that you're trying to get at it's good and sometimes it even gives a really cool effect because you might just be hearing like the bottom notes. I'll show you an example. Let me get my guitar. So if you, if you can, let's say, and this isn't the best example, but let's say you can't play the C, G chord on the fifth fret. I'm just using this now because that's what came to my mind. I can, but for some reason you can't. It's difficult for you. You could just do the first getting across the notes and the chord, it's not the same as, but you could actually write a really cool song where you just use those notes. but it just, it's got a real, uh, got a real Elliot Smith vibe to it. And I think it's just something to do with the way he, he does that a lot where he might just play some of the notes and not the full chord. effect to it. It does sound a lot darker and maybe a bit more punk. Um, and in another interview I noticed that he he feels that he's not really a folk singer. He's more punk. And I think that this sort of like attitude towards playing where you know it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just sort of getting and you get the melody there. It is a bit punk. That's cool. Okay, so let's let's listen a bit more to the interview. Just keep finding new things and well, just things that you personally like about music and put it into a blender and see what comes out, you know? And then um, if you like it, it's bound to there must be something good about it because you liked it, right? I think this is my favorite advice from the interview. If you like it, then there must be something good about it, right? If you like it, there must be something good about it. This is something that sort of really saved me or helped me in my own sort of journey, not to be all cheesy, as a musician. It's just the idea that, you know, not everyone is going to like the music or art that you make, but if you like it, then there's other people out there that will like it too, and you will find those people. Uh, just keep making stuff that you like, and listen to stuff that you like, and like he points out, just keep listening to that stuff and daydream and use your imagination and what will come out of it is something different but maybe inspired by something that you liked or really thought was cool. And I think that's kind of how art should work, how music making should work. 
it's a lot more of a relaxed approach. The mindset is very much just, if you like it, do it and don't care about anything else. And that's kind of my main takeaway. I love Elliot Smith. I think he he's brilliant. And I love his attitude towards music. He just loves music. He's just a guy that loves music and he wanted to make it. And I'm glad he did because like when I was growing up listening to him, I he made me feel a lot less alone and gave me that sort of it's hard to explain, but sometimes music can feel like a friend, especially if, when you're going through a hard time or if you're feeling kind of lonely or like uh, people maybe around you don't understand you or you don't quite fit in. And listening to Elliot Smith and his lyrics, it really made me feel understood and like I wasn't alone and that, you know, maybe there's other people out there who can relate to me as well. And also the music itself is just so beautiful. I love his use of melodies and chord changes. And it's just, there's something really simple about the melodies, which I love, but yet there's a richness and there's a complexity to it as well. And yeah, I think that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Deanna Fay, singer songwriter. And if you like what I'm doing here, Give this video a like, click the buttons down below, subscribe, and you can also support me on Patreon, and or if you like, you can buy me a coffee, check out the links. Yeah, leave a comment if you also love Elliot, or if you have any suggestions for what songwriters to cover next. Thank you so much for watching, and cheers!